Why didn't Jiraiya bring Nagato, Conan, and Yahiko back to Konoha with him? I've got a lot of respect for Jiraiya. He did indeed take care of a group of three orphans over the course of several years. He still couldn't hang around for Naruto though. I mean, Konoha really just dropped the ball on Naruto. But part of me simply wants to say that he didn't know about Naruto or thought that maybe he was being taken care of. I don't know, but that's not the point. The point is, Jiraiya's not above raising kids. But my question is why he didn't train them anywhere else. I understand that Amegakure was their home, and I further understand that their dreams were centered around Amegakure, to be peacekeepers and to be like Hanzo, which I'm sure made Jiraiya cringe. A lot. But what if he had just decided to bring them back to Konoha with him? Surely if he had, something might have changed, or perhaps they would have remained undeterred. After all, Nagato, Konan, and Yahiko were originally driven by what we call holy fire. Their dreams weren't just pushed forward by one's own desire, but because they were what was good, and they felt obligated to do what was good. So in the end, there is no change to the fact that they would want to bring peace. But perhaps what would change is their fall. After all, in Konoha, they would have been able to meet a bunch of people that would eventually cause a lot of change in their lives, as well as the world. And I'm interested to see how this would change things. So buckle up, Buttercup, and look upon another of the Amagi's infinite Tsukiyomi worlds. Welcome to the Amagi! Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you're subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. The rain fell as they walked. Jiraiya looked up to the clouds and back towards his three young charges. It had been raining ever since they left Ame, and now Konoha's gates were in clear view ahead of them. It was always said that you could take a person out of their village, but you could never take the village out of a person. Still, looking back at Nagato, Yahiko, and Konin, Jiraiya wasn't quite sure of that. After all, it seemed that the village had followed them, the intense precipitation falling being a constant reminder of the village they had just left. As Nagato looked up into the clouds, he began to wonder if every village was like Ame. He had read books and heard stories of lands where no rain fell, lands as dry as, well, whatever was dry. It's not like Nagato had much experience of the concept of dry. But as he walked now, he felt as if that had all been a lie, the rain being as heavy and prevalent here as it had been before. Despite that, and despite how tired their feet were from walking all day, Yahiko still seemed to have a pep in his step. While he had originally been depressed to leave his village where he grew up, the last place he and his parents had ever spent time together, he was currently full of hope, believing that the future held great things for them, and that this was merely the first stepping stone to eventually helping Ame. By helping themselves in Konoha, they were helping Ame Gakure in the long run. They would be helping the world in the long run. And so Yahiko kept a smile on at all times. To be frank, Nagato himself had been a little nervous about this from the start. He wasn't sure he wanted to leave Ame, not that it held anything there for him. Nothing but horrible, tainted memories that all the same he couldn't bring himself to let go of. Even if the memories hurt, he couldn't just leave them behind, and by leaving, he felt as if he was abandoning everything that he loved, even if what he loved was no longer present in Ame. Conan had comforted him in this way by telling him that what he loved he would carry inside of him forever. The good times and those memories were something already in his heart, and they did not need Ame to keep those memories alive. Passing through the gates, they entered the strange foreign village. It seemed far less industrial than Ame, more rural. Yet all the same, this village was one of the five superpowers among the shinobi world. It was astounding how such a humble-looking village could also be one of the largest and strongest in existence. Yahiko already liked this place. It felt homey. Jiraiya continued to lead them toward the heart of the village, straight toward the monument where the faces of previous Kage would be displayed. Such a sight astounded Conan, who saw this as one of the grandest works of art she had ever witnessed. Jiraiya smiled as he saw her admire the monument. The mountain bearing the visage of the Kage was the face of Konoha in the literal and figurative senses. It never got old, seeing people's reaction. What happens if you get a new Kage though, she asked. Simple. We carve a new face on the mountain. For most outsiders, they were worried with how they were going to carve faces out of the rock. For those in the village, the fear was that they would run out of rock with which to carve new faces. This would not happen in Jiraiya's lifetime, but that was a legitimate fear for all those in the village. 
They continued walking until they reached the Hokage's office. There, they found a man in a long white robe, wearing a large red pointed hat. The man sported a brown goatee and possessed liner around his eyes not too far removed from Jiraiya. Despite his somewhat youthful appearance, his true age was displayed in the salt and pepper hair sprinkled throughout and the hair they could see under his hat. He saw the orphans and Jiraiya and smiled, the crow's feet around his eyes slowly contracting as to show how he got these wrinkles in the first place. Welcome back, Jiraiya, the man said. Orochimaru and Tsunade got back a little earlier and told me of the guests you'd be bringing. Jiraiya nodded and presented the three kids. Jiraiya had to push quite a bit to get them out there, their heels digging into the wood trying to stop their forced movement. They were huddled together into a tight group, simply looking without saying a word. All of that excitement they'd displayed earlier had suddenly fallen to ice-cold dread. Hiruzen smiled. A shy bunch, are they not? Jiraiya gives a slight chuckle. Not so much shy as they are cautious. Hiruzen would offer a slight nod. Indeed, it's a good quality to have in a shinobi. I assume these three do indeed wish to become shinobi. Hiruzen looked at the report offered by Tsunade on the children. Jiraiya nodded. Yeah, they do. But they don't wish to become shinobi only for the sake of any village, but as a group of peace seekers. Hiruzen looked up, his soft smile slightly fading but not entirely disappearing. You know that Konoha generally doesn't train outsiders. But what's an outsider when we've declared the village to be anyone's village who so desires it? Jiraiya posited. Hiruzen sat back in his seat. It's anyone's village who so desires to serve it. But from the sounds of it, these children do not wish to serve it. That's not to say that we won't let them stay. There are valued guests. But all the same, I do not know if we should so easily give away our secrets when they don't seem to be of the mind to actually serve in its military force. Jiraiya shook his head. I'm not asking to show them everything in the secret folders, Lord Third. I'm simply asking for them to receive the same opportunities. They will serve the village. It's just not their dream. It's a stepping stone to their dreams. Hiruzen stroked his goatee. If you say we should train them, then I'll approve it. Jiraiya offered him a slight bow of thanks. Jiraiya turned to lead the kids out, but was halted. I did not say I was finished yet, Jiraiya. Jiraiya turned back. Hiruzen would continue reading the paper presented to him by Tsunade. It says here that one of the boys possesses an unusual dojutsu. Jiraiya nodded. Indeed. He brought Nagato a bit closer. Nagato seemed a bit nervous. Hiruzen would gently push the hair covering Nagato's face aside. Unusual, he said, looking at them. I've never seen anything like this. It must be rare. Jiraiya then spoke. I've posited a theory that this could be the legendary Rinnegan. Hiruzen looked at Jiraiya and then back to Nagato. It certainly fits the description. Highly unusual. This boy is not descended from the Uchiha, though, but from the Uzumaki. Jiraiya nodded. It's possible that he possesses Uchiha blood, even if distantly. Hiruzen nodded. I suggest taking him to the Uchiha for a check, just to be sure. Jiraiya would nod. Is that all? Hiruzen sat back in his chair. That's all. You're dismissed. As they left, Hiruzen smiled and waved to them. Welcome to our village, children. I hope you enjoy your time here. As they left, Conan spoke. What a nice man. From here, they made their way to Jiraiya's home to rest for a time and to get off their feet. Hiruzen would send a message to the Uchiha and ask their leadership to gather for a meeting about something important. After a few moments of rest, they would be informed that the Uchiha Council of Elders was waiting for them. And so the group would make their way to the Uchiha compound where they'd be escorted to the meeting by a few kind Uchiha. For this, Conan and Yahiko were merely there to watch. This was all about Nagato. Jiraiya was only there to provide context. They had Nagato sit before them all, and it was obvious that he was nervous, not used to the attention he was being given. As he sat there, the newest and one of the youngest clan heads of the era, Fugaku, appeared, who was no more than 23 years old. He would be surrounded by the elders of the clan, and they would begin to make inquiry. The group would ask that Nagato please display his eyes to them, to which Nagato would push the hair from his brow and display them as commanded. Seeing the eyes, there was an audible gasp in the room. A bead of sweat formed on Nagato's cheek and ran down to the bottom of his jaw before dropping off. After a close examination, they had determined that this was in fact a Rinnegan, just as the stone tablet had said. Who is this child? Fugaku asked. This is Nagato Uzumaki of the village hidden in the rain. Uzumaki? Fugaku asked. Jiraiya would affirm that he was. Fugaku stroked his chin. According to information provided to us by the Uchiha Stone Tablet, an artifact passed down by the Sage of Six Paths, a Rinnegan can be awakened by the union of Senju and Uchiha Chakra. 
Who were this boy's parents? Jiraiya stuttered a bit. Uh, Fuso, a tiny voice said. Fuso was my mother, and Issei was my father. Fugaku eased forward a bit and spoke in a calm, inviting tone. Can you tell me what their clan affiliations were? Nagato nodded. Uzumaki. My mother was descended from the Uzumaki, and my father was not from a clan that was very big. Just a small family line from a clan that was destroyed in the Warring States period. Fugaku nodded and began to speak with the other members of the clan via whisper. This boy doesn't possess any Uchiha genealogy. That you know of. One of the elders spoke. The elder turned to Nagato. Do you know if either of your parents had any direct connection to the Uchiha? The elder asked. Nagato shook his head. Can you shut off your Rinnegan? Another elder interjected. What? Nagato asked. The elder repeated. Can you shut it off? The Rinnegan is a dojutsu of the same family and type as the Sharingan. You're currently in the activated state. Simply tell your eye to relax and it should shut down like a Sharingan does. Nagato sat there for a moment. I cannot shut it down. It's been active for as long as I can remember. Each of the elders looked to each other and then to Fugaku. Fugaku ordered the Uchiha optometrist to perform an exam on his eyes in front of the council. The doctor agreed. Coming to Nagato, he began examining his Rinnegan. It is authentic, the doctor said while he was checking it. It possesses a very similar internal structure to a Mangekyo Sharingan, but slightly more advanced. He continued to examine the eye, unable to hold back his excited nature at being able to investigate one of, if not the most reputed dojutsu to ever exist. Pulling back, he gave his report. The Rinnegan are indeed authentic, and they do possess the same internal structure as a Sharingan. Close examination reveals that this is more than just a Rinnegan, however. He possesses the the structure for a Sharingan and Mongekyo Sharingan within, indicating that he should have both of these. How long have you had the Rinnegan? Fugaku asked. Nagato thought about it for a moment. My parents said that I've always had them, to their knowledge. Have you ever displayed a Sharingan or Mongekyo Sharingan in your life? Nagato shook his head. Fugaku looked to the optometrist and spoke. He possesses Rinnegan that he can't shut off, and the structure for a Rinnegan and Mangekyo Sharingan that he can neither activate nor mark when he gains such things. Is it possible that he possesses transplanted eyes? The doctor would turn to Nagato and place his fingers against his temples while making use of the mystic palm technique to see within his head. The doctor would then speak. I detect some scarring on the optic nerve. Does that mean they were transplanted? Or could it perhaps be from overuse? The doctor shook his head. The damage done to a Mangekyo Sharingan is specifically dealt within the eye itself, and though it does possess some scarring within, indicating the use of a Mangekyo in the past, his eye is fine. But the scarring on the optic nerve indicates that the nerve was severed and reattached. It's my expert opinion that these eyes the boy possesses are not his birth eyes, but the eyes of someone else who possessed a Sharingan. Nagato was shocked. He looked down at his hands as he slowly raised them to touch his eyes. These eyes aren't mine? Then whose are they? Nagato seemed slightly agitated, quite a bit scared. The optometrist turned to him and put a hand on his shoulder. It's okay, you're fine. Ocular transplants aren't out of the ordinary and it's done for many reasons. He does raise a valid point, however, one of the elders said in regards to Nagato. He possesses eyes that are mysterious and powerful, yet they're not the eyes he was born with. So it begs the question, if he did not awaken them, who did? Were they Rinnegan when he got them? Or were they simply transplanted into his head and became Rinnegan due to his distant connection to the Senju clan? But the biggest, most important question we must ask ourselves right now, at this very moment, is that if he should be allowed to keep them. The council began to clamor amongst itself. Nagato seemed distraught. Get to keep them? Does that mean that Jiraiya... Jiraiya walked over and knelt down to him and embraced him. The crowd began to quiet down as they heard the sound of subtle sobbing. The council looked to see Nagato crying into Jiraiya's chest. I don't want to be blind, Nagato said. The room was silent until one of the council members looked to Fugaku. What do we do? What will we do? Fugaku looked back at the distraught boy who was now being comforted by the other children. I think he's suffered enough, Fugaku said. Let him keep the Rinnegan. Whoever gave them to him, they gave them to him for a reason. I don't think it's up to us to take those away. Let him keep them. If we do, we may never know what the stone tablet says, one of the elders said. Fugaku looked to the man. And why not? Do you assume the child does not know how to read? Well, no, the elder stumbled. Fugaku waved his hand to Nagato. Then he can read it for us. There's no harm in that. Fugaku turned back to Nagato. Do not worry, child. Nobody will take your eyes. They're yours to keep. Nagato looked back. Really? Fugaku nodded. 
Yes, keep them. We simply ask that you do us a favor. We want you to read the stone tablet for us. Nagato looked at Jiraiya and then back at Fugaku, agreeing to do so. And so they brought Nagato to the stone tablet at the Naka Shrine and asked that he read it. From start to finish, he read it to them, making mention of the story of the Uchiha and the story of the Sage of Six Paths. He read of the battle between Hagodomo and the Ten Tails, the creation of the moon via Chibaku Tensei, and finally he told of the infinite Tsukiyomi and how it would be the salvation of the Uchiha. Fugaku was surprised surprised at how much there was on there that he didn't know of. According to the tablet, it spoke of the power of the Ten Tails being the power of the Sage himself, and how gathering them all together into one place would bestow one with the powers of the Sage, and the powers of the infinite Tsukiyomi. Nagato was astounded by this as well. The Uchiha would beg Nagato to stay with them at the compound, going so far as to offer him foster parents who would love and take care of him. But this Nagato denied, stating that he wanted to stay with his friends. He wanted to be with Yahiko and Conan. Jiraiya offered to keep them close and help raise them, which they had already agreed to. The Uchiha found this sad, but all the same, they respected it. Jiraiya would later tell Hirazin about the Uchiha stone monument and the Uchiha's reaction to its contents, which Hirazin found troubling. During this time, Nagato, Yahiko, and Conan would be introduced to the rest of the class. They sort of kept to themselves most times, but there were two particular students that they seemed to grow rather close with, Obito Uchiha and Rin Nohara. Conan seemed to connect better to Rin than her compatriots did, but the same could be said of Yahiko and Nagato's connection to Obito. They seemed to grow rather close. Nagato was much older than Obito, being about three years older, Nagato 12 and Obito 9. Despite that, Obito seemed to have more of a grasp on what it was to be a shinobi, being capable of various techniques already. Despite this, Obito connected well with Nagato, due to Nagato possessing a Rinnegan, much like the Uchiha's Sharingan. Despite that, Obito had yet to actually awaken his Sharingan, so there wasn't much that he could help him with there, but he did attempt to help Nagato and Yahiko learn various jutsu. And indeed, they learned quite a bit, though Yahiko, for obvious reasons, could not keep up with Nagato, who seemed to learn a jutsu the moment he saw it for the first time, a trait that was possessed by everyone with a Sharingan, Obito had said. The kids would hang out together after school, too, and go out to play or eat. One day, though, Nagato would seem a bit more forlorn than usual. Nagato was not generally expressive, by which I mean he didn't seem to smile much, but today he was exceptionally non-expressive. Nothing Obito, Rin, Yahiko, or Konan could do would snap him out of it. They would simply ask him what the issue was, and Nagato would respond by telling him that this day marked the anniversary of his parents' deaths. Needless to say, this put a damper on the kids' moods. Konan and Yahiko seemed a little upset about that, not just because they felt bad for Nagato, but also because they too were remembering the loss of their parents. Obito Nagato could feel the mood drop and decided to sit on the swing next to Nagato, slowly kicking his legs back and forth to get enough momentum to actually swing. You know, I don't have parents either, he said in the most nonchalant fashion possible. Yahiko and Conan looked back at him. What happened? They all seemed to say in unison. Something that felt quite awkward, though the moment passed quickly. Obito spoke. They died in the Second Shinobi World War. Nagato looked down. Sorry. Obito scoffed. Why would you be? You didn't kill him. Either way, I survived and so will you. It sucks sometimes, but I guess you just gotta deal the hand you're dealt. I've got my grandmother to help me through this and you have Jiraiya, so I guess we just have to be grateful for what we have. Nagato nodded. After a bit of playing, the group was on their way home. However, as they were making their way back, Nagato stopped when he looked into a crowd. Mom? He wondered. Yahiko looked back. Come on, Nagato. Nagato just stood there. Mom, he said as he couldn't believe what he had just seen. Yahiko turned around and walked a little closer. Nagato. Suddenly Nagato burst out into a dash. N Nagato, Yahiko cried out. What was that about? Rin asked. I, I don't know. He just shouted that he saw his mom and went running. Obito sighed. Then we better go after him. Nagato ran through the crowded streets, blowing past patrons, running into others, with only a slight turn and an apology called back at the person behind him. He kept running until he saw her in the distance. Her red hair, the way she walked. It was his mom. It had to be. How? Why? He didn't care. It was her. He ran through the streets. Mom! He ran up to her. Kushina Uzumaki turned to look at Nagato. The boy suddenly pulled back as if he had just collided with an electric fence. He suddenly clammed up. It wasn't his mother. How could it have been? He had seen his mother die right in front of him. Why did he think it could have been? Kushina looked to him. 
Hey, you're an Uzumaki too, she said with a smile and a slight giggle. I didn't think many of us existed anymore. She looked down at him. Let me guess. You saw me and thought I was your mom. Well, that's fine. I can help you if you're lost, pumpkin. Nagato turned away and didn't say anything. She smiled. Shy, huh? I get that. Suddenly, the others caught up with them. Nagato, Yahiko shouted. He looked to the boy who was standing there as if he were ashamed of himself, a thick shadow pulling down his face as his hair hid the most of his expression, save a quivering lip. Wasn't her, he said. Well, even I could have told you that. She's been dead for three years. Obito walked up. Excuse me, Miss Kushina. Our friend seems to have had a brain fart. Kushina looked over. Wait, did he just say your name was Nagato? The boy looked back and offered a slight nod, just keeping his face hidden. Kushina began to grin. You're one of the cuties that Jiraiya brought back. Oh, and you other two must be the rest of the trio. Nice. She then saw Obito and Rin. Ah, and you two are here. Are you their friends now? Rin smiled and nodded her head. This brought delight to Kushina's face. That's wonderful. I'm glad the kids have already found some friends in you two. Everyone deserves at least one, and now they've got double that, so they're really getting ahead of things. Her gaze turned back to Nagato, whose body was displaying some form of emotion that he was attempting to suppress. Her motherly instincts kicked in. Hey now, what's wrong? She asked as she came to him and knelt down. Is something the matter? Yahiko spoke in Nagato's place. We're sorry, ma'am, he just... You reminded him of his mother, and for some reason, his brain thought you could have been her. She... She looks just like her, Nagato said, fighting to not sound as emotional as he was. Kushina's heart shattered into pieces as her inner mom turned to jelly. Must console small bean, her inner Kushina said. She pulled him in close to hug, something that caught Nagato off guard. He was shocked. Why are you... Kushina pulled back. We may not be direct family, but we're from the same clan. That at least makes us distant family. And whether close or distant, family's still family. And for a moment, Nagato felt as if he was once again in his mother's arms. He hugged up against her, his emotions full on display, thick tears rolling down his cheeks. The resemblance was uncanny, perhaps a bit younger in appearance. She looked more like she could be his older sister rather than his mother, but all the same, the resemblance remained, as did a family connection. It was almost as if he had found his long lost sister, or perhaps a distant aunt. All the while, Kushina continued to hug him close and let him cry into her shoulder. Rin too was starting to cry, but hers were tears of joy as displayed by a smile on her face. Yahiko seemed a little upset by it, displaying a bit of a pout on his face and crossed arms. Kushina smiled. Are these your friends, Nagato? Nagato looked back. They're my closest friends, Conan and Yahiko. We're like family. Kushina smiled. Family of yours is family of mine. She pulled Yahiko and Conan into the embrace. Kushina! Kushina! A voice called. She looked back and found Minato running their way. Hey Minato, what's up? He stopped and looked at the scene. Wow, I knew you liked kids, but you're resorting to kidnapping now. She puffed out her cheeks in annoyance. Very funny, Flash. These are the kids that Jiraiya brought with him. Minato's face lit up. Oh, you're the Ame orphans. The mood immediately changed as Minato realized he slips up. I mean, the Ame... children's? He shook his head. Hey, Obito, Rin, what's up? We're just hanging out with our friends. Minato was surprised. Oh, you're friends with these kids. Well, isn't it a small world? Jiraiya was my sensei. Oh, you were Jiraiya's student? Yahiko asked. I think he told us about you once. Weren't you the super strong, super smart, but also super dumb shinobi who always had new jutsu, but named them too hard for everyone, including yourself, to remember? Minato blinked a couple times. I liked that sentence better when it started as a compliment. Yes, I am. Minato Namikaze, the student of Jiraiya and soon-to-be mentor of Obito and Rin. He pointed to Obito and Rin and smiled. I see you've already met my girlfriend, Kushina Uzumaki. Nagato continued to hug into Kushina. Minato couldn't help but feel slightly jealous. I guess it really is a small world. So many connections between us all. Would you like to have some tea with us? Jiraiya should be on his way not too long from now. Why don't all of us meet up at our place? The kids didn't seem to have much of an issue with this. Kushina would stand and turn around. I was just on my way home with groceries. I can throw on a pot if you want. Minato would offer to take her bags, which she would agree to. As they began to walk off, Team Minato, or what would soon be Team Minato, would follow their master, as Yahiko and Conan weren't far behind. Beside Kushina was Nagato, whose hand she held the entire time, making small talk with him. This could only bring a smile to Minato's face as he remembered why he fell in love with her in the first place. Returning to their place, they put on the pot and continued to talk until Jiraiya came. Jiraiya would be surprised to see so many people gathered. Together, they would have tea and chill for a bit, talking about matters related to the Uchiha stone tablet and what would be the end of the war. But as you know, peace doesn't last. 
As a few years of quiet went by, two to be exact, another war was seen on the horizon, a continuation of the hostilities from the former. By this time, Nagato, Yahiko, and Konan were 14, and they had also not only graduated from the academy, but had become Chunin, and continued as the team Jiraiya had chosen. All the while, Team Minato had found their replacement, a boy named Kakashi Harake, who, despite his incredible skill, was actually quite a stickler, which led to him being ejected from many teams for bringing them down. But Minato hoped to fix that. The third Shinobi World War kicked off the same as it always had, and initially, Yahiko was hesitant to get involved, claiming that it was against his beliefs to kill anyone, and to that end, he carried a katana with a blunted tip. Jiraiya never did stop him from doing this, knowing that he shouldn't really be there. But because they were in the village of proper age and counted among Konoha's shinobi, they had to join the war. None of the missions they got really seemed to fit them, save sabotage missions, where they weren't forced to kill, but instead they destroyed infrastructure to keep others from being able to fight. This was more up their alley, so imagine how excited they must have been when they were assigned to the Kanabi Bridge mission alongside Team Minato. And with that, I think I'll call it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. This is one I've been meaning to do for quite some time, but never got a chance to get around to. I'm interested to see where this story will go. With Nagato in Konoha at this moment, I can only imagine the things that will change. The question remains though, will pain still happen? I guess only time will tell. Anyway, be sure to leave a comment and tell us what your favorite part was. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when the latest videos drop. And until next time, peace out. Did you enjoy our video? Well, then be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.